Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, an iTunes number one kids and family podcast, and an iHeart Radio Podcast Awards best kids and family podcast nominee. We have a special Books from Teens to Tots edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. This has been very popular. Two great guests today. Leslie Wall will be here sharing her suggestions for great dystopian books we can read with our teens. And Rosie Russell is back. Rosie Russell is back to us to tell us about her beautiful new book, Moonshine May. You know, the holidays are right around the corner, and I bet you are looking for the perfect gift. The perfect gift for that curious kid in your life. Or maybe, maybe there's a special teacher in your life. Maybe it's your kid's teacher. Maybe it's a homeschooling parent. Maybe, maybe it's somebody that you love. Maybe it's your kid is now a teacher. Well, really, really excited. I was exploring littlepassports.com slash reading, littlepassports.com slash reading, and discovered that they have subscriptions for teachers. I mean, this is so exciting. Little Passports is the perfect holiday gift for curious kids of all ages. Little Passports delivers fun-filled packages right to their door every single month with engaging hands-on activities, interactive projects, and unique souvenirs just waiting to be discovered. Little Passports monthly subscriptions are designed to spark kids' curiosity about geography, world culture, or science. From exploring sea creatures in Costa Rica to building a Big Ben like the one in England or making an ancient Greek headpiece, every month is a different adventure that will fuel their imagination and spark their natural curiosity of the world around them. It's the perfect gift for kids ages 3 to 13 this holiday season. It also could be the perfect gift fit for the teacher in your life. Order today by going to littlepassports.com slash reading. Littlepassports.com slash reading. Once again, coming to us from Colorado, she's one of our favorite guests. She always has some super, super ideas of books that we can co-read with our teens. She's the author of some great books herself. Where You Lead is her latest, and she's also one of the driving forces behind CatholicTeenBooks.com. Please welcome back to the show, Leslie Wall. Leslie, how are you? Great. Thanks so much for having me. Always love when you come in. You always have such great suggestions for us. And and today we're, we're doing something a little bit different. You have some great suggestions on some dystopian books that yep. that our teens might enjoy and that uh, that we may enjoy co-reading with our kids. Yep, that's right. Um, now, when I first heard about this Christian dystopian, it seemed kind of an odd mix of genres to yeah. me. But um, when I started reading them, I realized, you know, if we ever did find ourselves in a terrible, evil or deranged society, people of faith would actually band together mm-hmm. and depend on their beliefs in God to get through the terrible times. So, which is an element that's obviously missing in the popular dystopian stories like Divergent or Hunger Games. But uh, it is a huge flaw, I think, because Christians would delve deeper into their faith, knowing uh, that whatever happens in this world, it doesn't matter because we have a promise of you know, eternal salvation. And, and that, yeah, tell, talk a little bit before you get into the book suggestions that, that just go a little bit deeper into what this whole dystopian thing is. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, actually, it's good you brought that because actually one of the books, even though I call it dystopian, is actually categorized as post apocalyptic. So what does all that mean? So from what I've understand, so dystopian is these are all things that might happen in the future. Mm-hmm. It's um, a, about a damaged society, often due to corrupt governments, and how um, it affects the people. So it's a futuristic look of what our world might be like. So mm-hmm. it's not really fantasy, cause, but it's a little closer to ours if there were bad governments in charge. And a post-apocalyptic is kind of the same, except it's, um, caused by a war or a devastating natural disaster ca- causes the damaged society. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't like 
to get into politics here on the Reading With Your Kids podcast, but we, my wife and I just returned from Panama, and while we're down there, we um, met a lot of people who were fleeing Venezuela. And, you know, and, and, and I'm, as I'm listening to their stories, I'm doing some more research and, and, and listening to stories on uh, the BBC about what's going down on down there. And it sounds like their society, their, their, their nation is kind of on the brink of their own kind of uh, dystopian disaster where, you know, the, the, their thousand percent inflation and, you know, the government isn't responding and and they're you know acting in in ways that doesn't seem to help and and people are fleeing and and they don't have opportunities and uh you know i just my my heart goes out and my prayers go out for the folks down there and um um hopefully the people who are who are down in venezuela and in dealing with this current crisis uh can find some some hope and faith in their faith yeah. Yeah, you're right. The dystopia, they're a little hard to read because they are a little closer to home of, of things that could actually happen mm-hmm. if things went a certain way, which makes it scary. And when, yeah, you have a, we're so lucky in the United States and to see some other cultures going through this is quite tough. Yeah. 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 So what's the first book on, on your suggestion list? Okay. The first one, uh, first of all, before I start, I would say, um, it's, this would be great to read as a family or I would recommend them for older, mature teens because they do have some things we're just talking about. Um, some of them have a little bit more violence, but just the subject matter can be a little scary for mm-hmm. two young children. So, uh, so the first one is called I Am Margaret by Corinna Turner. And she is one of the authors on the Books for Catholic Teen, Catholic teen Books website. And she is such an amazing author. I really love her style. In fact, this book was one of the best I read last year in all the ones I've read. So it's a dystopian story about a teen named Margot and her boyfriend, Bane. And they live in England, but at a time when it's full of evil and only the most productive members of society are wanted or needed. Mm -hmm. The others are basically recycled and used for parts to help the more worthy citizens. Uh, so when Margot has always struggled with math her whole life, and when she doesn't pass her sorting exam, she's sent to a facility where she will eventually lose her life. But Bane is not going to let that happen if he has anything to do with it. Uh, so this is a great story. Like I said, probably not for everyone. There's some violence and some... Imagery that is, can be disturbing. However, it is so well written and mm-hmm. intense action and incredible characters. Like Margot is smart, strong, fearless, with a strong faith. Bane is a bit reckless, but brave and selfless, devoted, and really one of my all-time favorite male characters. Yeah. So, uh, again, it's a great one if you're into this kind of story. A fabulous book, and she it's a series, so mm-hmm. there's quite a few in the series as well to keep you busy. You know, that it it reminds me, my and 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 when my son was um middle school, early high school, uh, I don't remember the title of the book, but but there was a book that that he had to read for for school, and it was a similar kind of story, dystopian kind of society, and where people were um if you if you weren't considered useful you know they would you mm-hmm. would lose your life and when he was reading that it was a time when my mom was dealing with parkinson's and wow. so it really hit home for him and it was it was re- a really difficult book for him mm-hmm. to read but it also Kind of pried the lid off, you know, typical guy, nothing bothers me. Yeah, my grandmother's going through this hard time. Yeah, I just have to suck it up and deal with it. Uh, but you know, this book really kind of opened, opened that can of worms. It really needed to be opened. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it was hard, but, but we got through it as a family. And, and, you know, it was the discussions about, about this book that really helped us, um, kind of help him deal with his feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's 
some difficult issues, but they're great ways to be able to talk about them with the family all together. Yeah. Now, one of the things you mentioned was that you loved Karina Turner's style of, of writing. Can you talk a little bit about different author styles um, and, you know, what is it about her style that you like so much? Oh, it's a little hard to see exactly what it is that draws me to her writing, but um, she just always has great characters and their dialogue is amazing. Uh, okay. uh-huh. She's actually a, she's from England. And so another part that I love is sometimes she has some of those little English phrases or words thrown in there that I just really like. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy those parts. But she is a very talented writer. She has a lot of fantasy books too. Um, but her I Am Margaret series is probably her best known. Yeah. Well, I just, I, you know, you're bringing up, you know, the English expressions. That's one of the, I love reading English authors. I love reading authors from Australia because they do use different words. They're, they're mm-hmm. using English, but they're using different words. And I'm amazed when I meet someone, especially an adult, and, you know, they're listening to somebody and, and they, they hear someone mention uh, an English person mention a flat or a lorry, and the yeah. person has no idea what they're talking about. I'm like, how, how do you not know they're talking about an apartment <laughs> and a truck? What's, what, come on. But, um, but I mean, it, it's true, and it just, it just reminds us that, you know, we might share a language, but even that language, there's differences, and the cultures are different. And, um, uh, yeah, I just, I, that, that's really fun. So, yeah, all right. And it always makes me wonder, like, why didn't we use, carry on some of those words. <laughs> yes. And why did we drop the you and color and neighbor? I don't know. It just, yeah. I guess we're lazy. <laughs> so what's the, what's the next book? The next one is also by um, an author from the Catholic Teen Books website, um, Teresa Linden. And she has a series when the first book is called Chasing Liberty. So it's another dystopian Catholic one. Um, this is kind of a fascinating look into a future world where religion has been pretty much eliminated. Mm. But what the concept I loved in this book was that even though nobody knows anything about God because they pretty much squelched it, he is still able to reach and communicate people, even if you don't know about him. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was a fascinating thing. Uh, so the main character, Liberty, she's grown up in this world, and there's no families or faith, like I said. Um, but she's always been guided by this inner voice that kind of she's called her friend. And she didn't know if that was just in her mind or something she made up until she's able to get away from this world where there's kind of an anti-culture part, and she finds that these, uh, Christians and um, people of faith um, so can... can guide her in her um, guide her in her faith journey mm-hmm. There. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I always think it's an interesting premise especially with dystopian but again this Christian viewpoint of goodness and love and faith that continues no matter what we face mm-hmm. faith is really good yeah absolutely and and again um, unfortunately this isn't all that far off because there, there are countries where um, religion hasn't been Totally eliminated, but certainly it is uh, repressed. Uh, we host a number of, of students from China in our home, and you know they come to us, and they've most of them have had no introduction to religion, and and it's amazing. We we always just invite them to come to church with us, and usually kids will come just out of curiosity. Um, mm-hmm. But it's amazing how quickly they embrace the message of love. Yeah, they're searching for something. But, Absolutely. Yeah, they bring up great discussion topics. And the author mentioned something to me, and she said, well, that's what's great about dystopian, because it makes you think about things before it can happen, to, you know, before it's too late mm-hmm. in their society. So mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. something to think about. Absolutely. Okay, so um, that's Chasing Liberty by Teresa Linden. Oh, what's the uh, third suggestion you have for us? So the third one is called Pulse. Pulse. P-U-L-S-E. Mm-hmm. And it's by L. R. Burkard. B-U-R-K-A-R-D. Now, as I mentioned before, it's 
technically not dystopian. It's a post-apocalyptic, mm-hmm. but you know, it's about a future possible scenario. So I'm including it. Sure. And this was really fascinating to me. Really made me think. <laughs> so the premise of the story is that there was some kind of cataclysmic event, an EMP or electromagnetic pulse, um, which they didn't know if it was through a war or a natural disaster, but it hits and a multi-state area, at least, and in the middle of the winter, and it has destroyed all electric circuits and grids. So basically nothing works. There's no power, no computers, no phone, no running water or flushing toilets. Even the cars won't run. So the story follows three modern-day friends, three girls, and... It's about how each of them and their families deal with this disaster. One lives out in the country, one is in the city, and one is in a suburb. And some of them are more prepared than others, but it was fascinating to see how each of them reacted and how the people around them reacted. And it made you wonder about you know, how dependent we are on technology, and if something happened, what would we do? What mm-hmm. could we do? How would others act when food and water was scarce? Could you protect your family? And, you know, all these kinds of things. Like I said, again, it's, it's a little overwhelming to think about, but it was fascinating, some great discussion topics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. and that's, again, unfortunately, um, not that far-fetched. Our family down in Puerto Rico just experienced it. They're still going through it with uh um, many, many parts of the island are still without power yeah. almost a year after Hurricane Maria. Right, and yeah, even if it's not a pulse, but yeah, anything, you know, some kind of natural disaster, we are, it's hard to be prepared and so forth. And it was funny because when I was reading it, they t- I just mentioned that the cars weren't running, and I thought that didn't make any sense. But j- recently we were on a trip, and while we were away, lightning struck near our house, and when we got home, most of the electricity was out of everything. But even one of the cars wouldn't run at all. It had kind of blown the circuit board in the car, even though it hadn't hit the vehicle. So, so I was like, oh, I guess that really could happen. So mm-hmm. <laughs> strange. Yeah. Well, these are great suggestions of some great dystopian books and great dystopian Catholic books that we can read, co-read with our, our teens and, and can open up lots of, lots of great discussion. Um, I am Margaret by, uh, Corinna Turner, Chasing Liberty by Teresa Linden and Pulse by L.R. Burkhardt. And of course, we don't want to forget that you should absolutely check out Leslie's, uh, Leslie's books, The Perfect Blind Side. We talked about extensively in the past and also her most recent book that is just burning up the charts where you lead and, and absolutely check out, uh, the website catholicteenbooks.com. Leslie, as always, we love having you here. Thank you so very much. Thanks for having me. See you next time. Rosie Russell will be here in just a moment to tell us about her brand new book, Moon Shadow May, Rosie's first hardcover book. But before she does, can I take a minute to tell you about something I think you would love if you have a curious kid in your life and you're looking for a perfect gift for that curious kid. I know you are. Look no further than littlepassports.com slash reading. Little Passports is the perfect holiday gift for curious kids of all ages. Little Passports delivers fun-filled packages right to their door every single month with engaging, hands-on, totally interactive projects and unique souvenirs just waiting to be discovered. Little Passports monthly subscriptions are designed to spark kids' curiosity about geography, world culture, or science. From exploring sea creatures in Costa Rica to building a Big Ben like the one in England or making an ancient Greek headpiece, Every month is a different adventure that will fuel their imagination and spark the natural curiosity of the world all around them. It is the perfect gift for kids ages 3 to 13 this holiday season. Check it out and order today at littlepassports.com slash reading. Joining us on the line right now from beautiful Kansas City in Missouri. She's one of our friends. She's been on the show before. Please welcome back the author of the brand new book, Moonshadow May. 
Here's Rosie Russell. Rosie, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thanks for having me again, Jen. So nice to have you back, and I'm really excited. Uh, Moonshadow May is your first hardcover book. You've had a number of, of books that were available on Kindle, uh, but Moonshadow yes. May is your first hardcover. C- congratulations. Yes, thank you. That's um, Yes, it's my eighth book, and uh, so this being a hardcover, we're really excited, and it's a very sweet story about a little girl that just loves the moon. Yeah, I was reading that. It's a, it's a rhyming book. What is it about the moon that May loves? Okay, well, she loves the glowing shine and the shadows that they leave behind. And um, this is actually, as you know, my books are all based on a memory of my own childhood. Mm-hmm. And this, this when I was a young girl, um, oh, a little older than the, the girl in the book, she's probably around seven or eight years old, uh, she, I actually had um, an experience where I lay down in my mother's bed to rest and everything. It was kind of light out, and next thing I know, I wake up, and the room was just be- had a beautiful glow. And I, I thought, well, that's strange. We have no street lights in our backyard, and so I'm looking around. And I'm thinking, oh, it's the moon, and I, we she had three walls of windows, so it just glowed, and and I've never forgotten that experience. Wow, isn't it amazing how certain memories from our childhood stay with us and are so vivid? Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. And it's, yeah, so when I thought of that, I thought this would be a perfect story to make. Yeah. Well, you know, talking about growing up where there are no streetlights, um, right now talking to you, the, the, the beauty of technology right now, I'm, I'm actually on the road uh, touring with my educational magic show, so I'm coming to you from uh, a beautiful Holiday Inn Express in uh, a rural part of New York State. And when I got off the highway last night, um, boy, I was on the road, and there were no street lights, and it was as mm-hmm. dark as I've seen it. I, I, this city mm-hmm. boy kind of gets scared when he's on the road like yeah. that. Yeah, it's not it's not something we see very often anymore unless you get way out in the country. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. So why did you decide to go the hardcover route with this book? Mm-hmm. Um, well, it is. Um, it's, I'm gearing it, of course, towards science, and I have some information in the back of the book. It's a, I have a little fact learning page, and I have um, a craft that the uh, children can do with their parents which is a lot of fun. And I give credit to um, our author friend, um, Rhonda Paglia, for, for passing on the directions how to make, they're called Galaxy Space Frogs. And the kids will have a lot of fun making those. And then I have a recipe for some very yummy cookies in the back. So it's just filled with a lot of really, really fun things that the kids will enjoy. That's fantastic. Now you you said that this is um uh you you're, you're really kind of delving into the science. What kind of of moon science will we learn in Moonshadow May? Okay, you, uh, they'll learn the phases of the moon. Um, that's one thing she wants to go back to school to learn. And as on the page on twenty eight, it says it's there's so many phases of the moon. It's hard to study all. And so there's the we explain that in the back of the book and. Um, let's see, tide pools. Um, the, that's something we had visited North Carolina, and I had, I, you know, we don't live near the ocean here in the Midwest, but uh, it's it was kind of fun because we <clears throat> had learned about uh, tide pools for the first time, mm-hmm. and I researched a lot on that too, and <clears throat> that has a lot to do with the way the moon, the moon, uh, sun and moon, in line with each other, and how tidal waves, um, you know, occur, and it's it's all very interesting. It is interesting. I remember, and I think I was a lot older than seven years old, uh, the first time that I had learned that the moon actually has an effect on the tides and the oceans. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, and so, so the little thing about the tide pool, though, is just it's just a little shallow pool of water that, that's left behind, and... Um, it just, I wanted to in, kind of incorporate just, you know, facts of that. And um, I do have a little bit, yeah, in the back of the book, there are some facts of that. So, Excellent, excellent. Well, it's an exciting thing. And I think one of the things that's exciting is that, that I, I'm, I'm looking and imagining Moonshadow May is a, a wonderful um, kind of jumping off point for 
a family to really kind of get into the moon and just going outside and and moon watching and and being more aware of the night sky. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I do believe in this is such a perfect time of year. <clears throat> well, in the summer too, but in the fall, it's it's really fun to go out and try to try to find the moon and see what stages it's at and. Yeah, it is, and just kind of uh, understanding and 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 helping our kids to understand how the phases of the moon happen. That there's not somebody up there with a light switch or a curtain pulling the, mm-hmm. you know. Right, and a lot of times it's you know they you go. I remember being a young child in the car and thinking the moon the moon's following us, you know, because it would just kind of go right along with us. Mm-hmm. And I think most children are very fascinated with the moon. Well, when I was growing up, we thought it was made uh, of, of cheese. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's lots of funny little things of that too. I, I think one of the one of the well, one of the really eye opening moments for me was the first time I looked at the moon with, and it wasn't even a telescope. It was um, a pair of binoculars. It was a very powerful pair of binoculars, but it <laughs> enabled me to kind of see some of the craters and the mountains that are on the moon. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's so many wonderful, fascinating pictures out there also online that children can look them up. And, and I do speak of um, Neil A. Armstrong in the book. It's just a short little part in there. But I actually was old, about the age that I had, the, you know, the feeling of loving the moon. I was that age when we saw him on TV step on the moon for the first time. Mm-hmm. And it was so exciting. It certainly was. I was also alive at that time, and um, coming home from a Godzilla movie, if I can remember quick, correctly, mm-hmm. uh, but we got home just in time to see him jump off and make those, uh, uh, make that famous statement. And uh, mm-hmm. it, it seems kind of, I, I, I don't know. It, it, I don't know if kids have the same kind of fascination with space as we had when our mm-hmm. country was involved in the space race and the race to go to the moon. Right, right. And this is in 1969, so they, uh, you know, it was a different time and we've advanced so much and learned so much more now. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I love to point out to kids is that that little rectangular thing in their pocket that so many kids have no matter how old they are, that little rectangular mm-hmm. thing that allows mm-hmm. them to call over the world actually has more computing power in it than all the computers that NASA had that, mm-hmm. that brought Neil Armstrong to the moon. Oh, I know, and it, it is. It's just fascinating how they have come so far, and they just keep learning more and more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell folks where they can find out more about Moonshadow May and about the other great books that you've written. Okay, well, um, all my books are on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, we're working hard to get them into the stores, um, but uh, they're uh, Rainy Day books. I believe that might be a Midwest store, but I'm um, pretty much I can uh, pretty much um, go in and search a lot of my titles, and they'll pop up in different stores. So, but Amazon and Barnes and Noble are our main ones, and they're all in there. Great, and um, so that's. And, and they can also go to my website and buy them through me, through the, as long as they're in the USA. Um, I, will, I will even um, ship them a book from my home. Yeah. And, and so what's, the, what's your website so folks can check it out? Okay. It's www.booksbyrose.com. Booksbyrose.com. And when you mm-hmm. go there, not only can you learn about Moonshadow May, you can learn about her other great books. And we really love the books that you wrote about beagles. It's mm-hmm. uh, uh, close to my heart because yes. we have we have a, a little beagle at home. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah, yeah that is fun. Well, yes. the, the name of the book is Moonshadow May. It's Rosie Russell's very first hardcover book. She has a number of great books out available on Kindle, but definitely check out Moonshadow May, our, our, an early reader science focus uh, about uh, uh, well, about a girl named May that's uh, based a lot on a wonderful memory that Rosie had. Rosie, we're so happy mm-hmm. uh, that you've been on. You came back to the show to tell us about this great new book. Oh well, thank you so much for having me, Jed. I appreciate it. 
please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. It's a really a, a special edition and something completely different and a little bit out of my comfort zone. You know, our friends at littlepassports.com slash reading, they've been talking about how Little Passports sparks kids' natural curiosity uh, about the world around them. And and I've been taking that to heart and exploring littlepassports.com slash reading. And I've been inspired. I've been inspired to go deeper into the world of kid lit and in, in literature in, in children's books. And so I took a trip down to the York Book Expo in York, Pennsylvania, and I did some exploring, and we came up, we created a special edition based on what I found, and I'll be sharing that with you in the next edition of the show. Can't wait, can't wait for you to check it out with me. You know, Little Passports is a perfect holiday gift for that curious kid on your list. With the subscription to Little Passports, kids get a fun-filled package each month designed to inspire their curiosity in geography, world culture, or science. For kids of all ages, order today at littlepassports.com slash reading. Hey, we want to thank Leslie Wall for being here today. We want to thank Rosie Russell for being here today. We want to thank our friends at littlepassports.com slash reading. And of course, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so much for making the world a better place by taking the time to read with your kids every day. Hey, I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. What? <laughs>